I want to show you how you could do multicolor printing really easily on a single nozzle printer using Orca. So there's a few settings you need to change. Let's hop into Orca. I'll show you how to build this, the settings you need to change, and how easy it is to print multicolor using a single nozzle. I've made an upgrade to a giant mouse and a little, uh, a little circle. Okay, so let's get into the settings you need to change. So in Orca Slicer, you're going to want to make sure you have your printer selected and you're going to click this little edit button and you're going to go into your machine G code. Right here, you're not going to have to worry about your start or end G code, but you are going to want to make sure before layer change G code is G92E0. A, a lot of times this is already set for you, but you're just going to want to make sure that's in there. You, this usually isn't set, and this is your change filament G code. So this M600 basically tells the printer, hey, stop printing, move the, the extruder up, move it to the side, uh, unload the current filament, tell the user to reload some new filament, heat the nozzle back up, and start printing. So it's going to ask you to press the button for that. Then the next thing you're going to want to change is in multi-material. So let's scroll to the top. These two check marks are very important. Single extruder multi-material. Click that button. Also, manual filament change. You're going to want to make sure that is clicked as well. And that manual filament change is going to make sure that it, the printer knows you're doing that on its your own. If you don't have that selected, it's going to print that purge line, and then it's going to ask you to change your filament. You don't want that because you already have the correct filament in there. You loaded it. That's all you have to worry about in the printer settings. Let's move on to the next one, which is this flushing volumes. I set it at zero because I don't need it to flush. I already am doing the pooping. I'm having it poop for me, and I am running that prime tower, so I set that to zero. The next thing is you're going to want to make sure you have your filaments listed in there, so you can click minus to take them out or plus to add another one. Um, so we already have our four in here. If you already have these set up, it'll let you choose new, new presets or uh, new settings. Um, if you want, you can choose which color and that will display on the uh, model. So let's just change that. You can see here it is yellow. Let's change it back to blue or green. Sorry. There we go. Once you have all your filaments set up there, let's go into the next settings, which is uh, in your global. Of course, you're going to want to make sure you have, you know, your right layer height, all your settings in here correctly, but we're worried about multi-material right now. So let's click into multi-material. You're going to want to make sure you have a prime tower enabled. So let me go to prepare so we can see that prime tower. So once you enable that prime tower, you'll see right here, boom, it pops up. There's your prime tower and it's showing all the, the colors that you're gonna be using in your model. You can change the width. And this is really important because you don't need it to be this big. You're already having the machine printing, so all you're really using this for is to get your nozzle printing filament so that it's flowing correctly before you put it onto your print. I found that I only need 20. Um, 10 might even be fine enough, but this should be around the default settings. You can go ahead and just copy these settings, and I promise they will probably they will work for you. Um, I Also, these advanced settings, I've been trying them a little bit. I haven't noticed too many differences, but I will keep using them on more... Uh, detailed models and let you know how it goes. Okay, so just a really quick, super quick summary. We've changed the printer settings. We've changed the flushing volumes. We've made sure our filaments are the correct filaments we want to use. We've gone into multi-material. We've set up our prime tower. So if you've done all of this, you should be able to print multi-material with a single nozzle. Let's hop over to uh, past Rando Tech Nerd to go through how this model is built and also go through what to expect while you're printing it. And I have the model already built and I'm going to go ahead and just show you the model and then I'm going to show you really quickly how to build it and then I'm going to go into the settings you need to make sure you have. 
Um, so I'm going to put chapters in here as well. If you don't want to watch this part, you can hop right into the settings. So as you can tell, first layer, clear pet G. Second layer, um, it prints the clear pet G, or sorry, it prints the blue, uh, the clear pet G, and then it goes ahead and prints the blue, or the green, sorry. Then the next layer, um, it prints the clear, and then, sorry, the red first, and then the clear, and then the next layer we go up, it prints the clear, and then does the color change to the blue, and then the very last layer is once again clear. And if you look while we're moving through uh, the prints, you can see there's this layer change. So I will talk more about the G-code for that as well. Um, there is an M600 G-code that sends to your printer, so you need to make sure that your printer has that enabled in the firmware. Uh, most newer printers do have that capability, so you probably don't need to worry about that portion too much, but I'll show you where you need to put that. So the very first step, let's get rid of this and I'll recreate it. Okay, so to do this really quickly, you can make a cube. We're going to adjust the cube to the dimensions we'd like to have it. And then we can click off the cube, click back onto it, making sure we're in objects setting. Right click, click add modifier, and we're gonna want to add a disc. Um, obviously you can add any modifier you'd like. So it's gonna say you gotta switch to per object settings. We're gonna say okay and not show it again. We're gonna make sure it's the right size. So 0 0.1, because that's what my layer height is and I want it to be one single layer. So just for this, we're gonna say 50 by 50. And if you look right here, we can click move, and I'm gonna put this at uh, zero. Let's try that out. And then we will move it into the place where we'd like. And now to see where that's lining up, let's hit preview. Oh, sorry, we need to change the filament. So let's change that to green. Let's go back to prepare. And we're gonna slice again. Okay, so we put that at the zero layer height. As you can see, it's right there in the middle of the print at the layer three. We'll go back in to prepare and we're gonna add another modifier. So let's add another disc. Let's put it at 0 0.1 and this is the scale, 50, 50. And we're gonna move that in as well and let's make sure we put it at the right height so let's say um negative 0.1 and let's change that filament you can either right click or press on that button and then we're gonna add in our last one add modifier disc change it to 0 0.1 50 50 and we'll move that in there. And so just really quick, oh, sorry, let's change that filament. And then really quick, I'm gonna make sure this is at the right height. So let's just say 0.1. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one final look to make sure I have them all in the right spots. Cause we, I wanna make sure that we have a, um, that we have them overlapping. So we're just gonna move. I'm gonna click on it, we're gonna click move. And that looks about right to me. We'll click on the next one. We'll move it over just a little bit. 
and we will click on the last one move it up and over so that's pretty good for for this purposes and let's click off of it we want to select that cube again and now we're going to slice it and let's scroll through so this is the first layer clear perfect and you can see I have the little tower right there we go up uh, we got our red the next layer we've got our green and then we've got our blue and clear for our final layer so our model looks good and here's that final print as you can see, it looks like it's almost on the same layer, but those are all on different layers. I really hoped building this model and going through those settings helps you on your journey to print multi-color filament on your single nozzle printer. It's really amazing how much power these old printers actually have, especially when you add in Orca Slicer. So I'm gonna leave the link to Orca Slicer down below. Big shout out to Polymaker as always, I want to let you know they did provide filament for this project. And also, I'm going to be uh, experimenting with other filaments, some UV reactive, some uh, glow in the dark. So consider subscribing for that. And there's a link to the Discord down below. Catch you on the next one.